Spunk has a different meaning in Australia than it does here. Actually. I'm sure. I'm sure. Actually, you have got three children, haven't you? I have Very got fertile. three. I have three. Got three. That, that's right. Where are we going to the conversation? I know. I was only going to make the remark that, that, in fact, that the only the only two people here among the four of us who have not taken their clothes off are actually Carol and myself. Because Dawn done it too. She posted her Esquire, didn't you? I did. Yes, did? I did. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did you stand by the windows with the wind coming? No, in? no. Oh, uh, permanently uh, uh, erect. Permanently. <laughs> Very liberating. <laughs> Very liberating. Right, so then, so you got all this, you were 300 quid to make a demo disc. Uh -huh. Right, and then along come the Spice Girls. Yes. Is that how it happened? They, you know, we, there was an audition and, and the funny thing was, I, um, I had another manager at the time and, you know, quite a good one and I thought, yeah, I'm carving this career, just starting it out. And then I met this, you know, the other girls and I thought, what do I do? Do I go with this guy that's a good manager or do I go with the girls, which I thought were fantastic, you know, I fell madly in love with them, with, you know, not so good management. And, um, and I remember asking someone into the record business, I said, what do you think I should do? He goes, girl band? Nah, never make it. And I thought, that's reverse psychology on me, thank you, I'll go with the band. <laughs> really? You know, you're wrong, you're wrong, absolutely, but, but, it's very instinctive. But you could have no idea that it would have taken off as the way it did take off. No, you couldn't. No. I think you know, we're very focused and, you know, we had, a, we had good gut instinct that it was going to work, really, and it was, you know, it was a tight thing together. But it changed, it must have changed your lives totally. And, oh, and to what, well, what, what interests me is, is you know, the, the manner in which it changed you. I mean, how did it change you? You went from this, mo one moment, all of a sudden, you're this girl from Watford, this, this group yeah. of, of wannabes, and the next thing, you're this... It's still a phenomenon. I mean, it's all over the world. But, and you're like doll. I bought you three times for my grandchildren, did you, dolls. You know. Did you play with them? Certainly. Um, <laughs> but no. But I mean, it's it was it's, it's been a remarkable story. It has. But the thing is, it's so fast. You've got to understand. Really, we were only in the public eye two years. But I mean, that's the state of consumerism. It's so fast. You know, and so you don't have time to digest it. You don't. You really so don't. It's a blur, is it, with you? It is really. One minute I was, you know, pinching Prince Charles's ass, and the next <laughs> minute, you know, I was on a on a boat in can. You know, I was sitting in front of the telly the other day, and suddenly I thought, oh my God, I pinch, I pinched Prince Charles's bum. I can't believe I'd done that. <laughs> I had firm. It, 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 it wasn't bad. It wasn't firm. bad, I have to say. <laughs> and you know, actually, one thing I would like to say is, for those, you know, Jerry Halliwell is here, but. Um, Ginger is not dead. She's still alive, and she does come to surface now and again, and she will be back. But the on the Prince Charles theme, on the, pause for prayer. On the Prince Charles theme, I mean, I mean yeah. that was that was the first time. By way of introduction, you pinched his backside. Yeah. But then, of course, you actually went and you sang at his birthday. Yes, and I had a big learning experience from that. If anyone is suffering from constipation, <laughs> sing to Prince Charles, because I went 11 times in that big dress. <laughs> Not good, I have to say. It's what I was the thinking. Big I was, frock. Yeah, I was thinking, imagine if I <laughs> fell over. What would I do? What would I do? So I came to this plan that if I did fall over, I was just going to lie there and pretend to be dead. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Part me off and never wake up. So, but I've had a, one hell of a year. I, it's been a... Um, it's been a, a disaster adventure movie. Did I tell you about my drowning in Uganda? Well, you... I was there with comic relief, and I, um, I was white water rafting, and I fell in the water, uh, in, the, in the rapids, got sucked under for 20 seconds, oh. and I'm telling you, and then the boat turned over and was smacking on top of my head, and it was like a beside of a fence. Poseidon. Adventure, yeah, and I was like Shelley Winters, and someone tried to save me, and I went, help me, help me. <laughs> it was just like, so there was that, and then from that I went to uh, being uh, going to the United Nations, and that was meant to be an educational visit, and suddenly it said, uh, no, you've got to speak to World Press, and I was like, oh my God, and what um, do you have to talk about to them? Well, basically, it was about contraception. All right. And what contraception are you using, Dr. Parky? <laughs> Well, it's, it's about... <laughs> I won't put you on the spot. You're too young to have read Cosmopolitan 26 years ago. Okay. <laughs> I'll let you off. Are you off. using the, uh, the pig's bladder method? <laughs> 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 oh, it's the pig's bladder now. So, no, basically, that, you know, I'm, I'm bringing awareness 
to um, plights of women in third world countries that are denied basic rights. I mean, there's facts like 600,000 women die every year giving birth, which is ridiculous. We wouldn't put up with it in this country. And, you know, I think I have a duty to make people aware of that. I'm meant to be the advocate of girl power. Well, you know, I have to take it one step further. This is the empowerment of women. Does it mean anything, girl power, though? Oh, totally. Does to it? I mean, did it change anything? I totally... I put my hand on my heart and I believed in it. You put your hand on your mic there, actually. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> Sorry. Well, it's still my beating heart. Yes, it so, is. But, but I, mean, I, I mean, is it or is it just a phrase? I mean, does it, does it work or, or what? I mean, it, wor it worked for me. I am living proof that if you put your mind to something and you feel strong, then, then you can achieve anything. Sometimes you've just got to go for it and, and believe. The power of the mind is everything. It, really, it doesn't have to be girl power. It's, it's people power. It's strength within here. It's believing in yourself. That's, it's about self-esteem. And let's have, you know, holding hands. We've very, you know. <laughs> Actually, I've got a picture. I've got an exclusive on, for everybody. Me, this is me. your um, this? late Christmas present. Um, well, yeah, after yeah. my hectic year, I went to New York to kind of escape a little bit, do a bit of shopping. But no, I was lying 8.30 in my bed in my nice flannelette pyjamas and there is a bomb scare in my hotel <laughs> and I have, they say, Madam, you have to get out of the hotel. So I'm standing in New York oh, isn't this in my flannelette pyjamas. <laughs> so everyone to see, I don't know if you can see oh, that. Can so that's an exclusive the paparazzi did not get, see? So it really was an initiative bringing my camera with me. I might go into journalism. My mum always used to make me take so fire escape pyjamas to university. Fire escape pyjamas. Fire escape pyjamas. <laughs> <laughs> a very lacy little green number just in case for that. Yeah. I've, I've heard of, I've job, heard of I clean going... underpants in case you get knocked yeah. down, but... Just, <laughs> that's, that's, that's especially for you. That's, I'm, I'm more yes. touched than I can tell you. And, uh, Everyone else has got <laughs> Thanks, Dennis. You're welcome. That's very nice indeed. Thoughtful present. You are, you are a thoughtful person, actually. Thank now, um, <laughs> let's talk about the other thing, too. You're, you're very, very... Um, outspoken on the business of the of the breast cancer campaign too, mm, weren't you? Totally. I, mean, I think that was probably the most uh, 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 inspirational thing that you, that, that you yeah, did, in a sense. Totally. Um, what were the circumstances of you getting involved in that? I mean, you, you had a scare yourself when you were... Yes, when you I were... was... Um, when I was 18 years old, and I was busy being a club dancer, and I had to pay my rent, I had a lump in my breast, and I thought, oh, got to get rid of this. I knew that, you know, went to see the doctor, and it got sorted bingo and I didn't think about it you know and then the Sun newspaper how many years later last year asked uh, they discovered it and start, decided to run the story at that time my accountant gave me this book um, by Ruth Picardy oh, uh, yes. before I say goodbye and I swear sure. to you I read this book and I cried mm. my eyes out sure, sure. and it made me realize how this is absolutely awful the humility that she she wrote the book as well you know she had two kids it was just and I just was so, you know, when something really touches you, and I thought, my God, I have an absolutely, absolute duty to do something about this. You see, my philosophy is, you know, we all blame society, that, but we are society. We have the power, you and I, to make a difference. And I have, in a, in a bigger way than most. I'm famous, so I can speak up about that, really. So if I can, if one person, you know, watching this, they've just said that, oh, then that's done something good. So, I, I feel that life is just so much take, take, take. We've got to give a, back a little bit but, more. But 